Well, this is pretty awesome. This is, I mean, kind of proving my point, isn't it? That uh, internal combustion is going to be known as being slow. BYD's electric supercar, which is, I believe, the most powerful production car in the world, insanely powerful. Well, somebody has driven this at a speed which is literally insane, 472 kilometers an hour, top speed. Now, apparently BYD have come out and said that this has set a new global worldwide top speed record. Of course, that isn't actually correct. BYD might have just gotten a little bit overexcited, but it's amazing anyway. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. BYD's Yang Wang U9. All right, this thing is mental, has just over 3,000 horsepower, and whoever drove it and was willing to drive it at 472 kilometers an hour should have been paid a lot of money because that's ferociously fast, and this is not a light vehicle. Anyway, I'm, gonna get, I'm guessing at these kinds of speeds, if you crashed going 472 kilometers an hour, I think you'd be dead no matter what you did, no matter what car or vehicle you're in. But hey, I still, I've got a lot of respect for the people who are willing to do this. It's pretty cool that we've got test drivers out there willing to do this kind of thing. Anyhow, the Yangwang U9 actually set a Chinese automotive speed record last November by going 392 kilometers an hour. Now it's gone a lot faster than that. In fact, it's gone about 80 kilometers an hour faster. I think people don't recognize just what this means because, you know, when you increase speed at 380 kilometers an hour, you add an extra one kilometer an hour, it's not the same as going from one to two kilometers an hour or going from 50 to 51. The resistance from the air increases exponentially. So the feeling going 472 kilometers an hour would be absolutely wild. To give you some context on this, uh, there are some other cars, supercars, which are much more, I'm assuming, much more expensive than BYD's Yangwang U9. For example, the Koenigsegg Jesko Absolute, that hit 531 kilometers an hour, according to Koenigsegg. The Bugatti Chiron Supersport hit 490 kilometers an hour, the SSC Tutara holds a record of 475 kilometers an hour. Uh, yeah, but um, BYD is pretty close to these vehicles. And I, honestly, I think the U9, with its more than 3,000 horsepower, is probably capable of doing 500 kilometers an hour. They just need a track long enough to enable it to do that. That's the big challenge here, finding the right road. Here's the point, though. Those cars are incredibly expensive. Uh, the Koenigsegg Jesko, I believe that costs about seven million US dollars uh, if you can get one. And the Bugatti Chiron Supersport, they're about seven million as well. And we're talking US dollars here. These figures are just astronomical. Now, apparently, the Yangwang U9, well, the base model is two hundred thirty-two thousand dollars. I'm going to guess this version. This is the track version. I'm going to guess this will be about three hundred thousand US dollars. So. I mean, we're talking one twentieth of the cost. One twentieth. I'm saying this now, and I'm going to put it out there. I think supercars in the future, most of them will come from China because really only a tiny fraction, you know, less than 0.1% of the population can own a supercar. They're just way out of the realm of possibility for the average person. And even people with a lot of money don't even buy one because they just think $7 million US dollars, that's just insane. I mean, I'm saying hypercar here, not supercar, hypercar. $7 million US dollars or $10 million US dollars, I'm not going to pay that. I've got the money, but I'm not going to do it. Not, I don't have the money, but some people say that. So I think when you can get a literal supercar that is just mind-blowingly fast, hypercar, absolute hypercar for say 300,000 US dollars, I think the, the number of people that buy one will actually increase significantly. Not that I think that's a good thing. Um, these are probably gonna be kind of dangerous considering they weigh two and a half thousand kilograms as well. Anyhow, this is now officially the fastest electric supercar or the fastest electric car ever. Now, it's not the fastest electric vehicle ever, though. The Ohio State University's Venturi Buckeye Bullet 3 student team uh, and driver Roger Schraw. So basically, Ohio State University, they built an electric streamlined vehicle, which 
actually set a world record with a two-way average speed of 341.4 miles an hour, meaning 550 kilometers an hour. And that was on a salt flat. That was in 2016. 2016, so nine years ago, they did 550 kilometers an hour. But um, I mean, as you can see, this thing is crazy. Uh, if it had a crashed, these guys would have been dead for sure. And it doesn't really have any way of kind of driving normally. I don't think you'd call it a car. It's more like a, a rocket. A rocket for driving on land if you're insane. Anyway, credit to BYD. Massive accomplishment. This, this car is an absolute weapon. I think the next step for BYD is to just put a higher energy density battery in this vehicle, get the weight down to about 2,000 kilograms, drop half a ton, drop, drop 500 kilograms, maybe reduce the power potentially a little bit, and then you have the perfect supercar. That would be, take one of the motors off, just have the three motors, uh, reduce that power down to 2,000 horsepower, just over 2,000 horsepower, reduce the weight 500 kilograms, and I think you'd have a vehicle that would beat the Nürburgring track times. I think it would beat every car on the Nürburgring ever. That would be, in my opinion, an absolute weapon. Make it all out of carbon fiber. Yeah, as you can see, I'm, I'm I'm salivating here for the future, the future of electric performance cars. I'm just dreaming of one day maybe being able to drive one. Owning one, probably not my thing, but driving one, that would be awesome. Thanks for watching. I'm telling you the, the honest truth. I've been a little scared in some of the electric cars that I've driven. One of them I drove had 1,300 horsepower. That's a lot. And I've got to admit, it's, it's a little scary driving a car that fast. If you don't think it is, you've probably never been in a car on a racetrack that can do zero to 100 in two seconds and is not small. I mean, it's not, you know, low to the ground, uh, analog type steering. You're talking cars with, you know, 2,000 Newton meters of torque, 1,300 horsepower. It's ridiculous. It's so much power and speed, but that's nothing absolutely nothing in comparison to some of the new electric supercars coming out of China. BYD, they've just revealed their supercar, the Yangwang U9, has 3,020 horsepower, 3,020 horsepower. Now, this thing I think would be monstrously fast, but monstrously scary because it's also monstrously heavy. 